Hello. Today I'm writing an indicator in MetaTrader 4 that doesn't use any of the inbuilt functions other than basic math. This is the Chaikin Money Flow Oscillator. So I'll give a quick explanation of what the oscillator is about and then we'll get into writing the code. So today I'm looking at the Chaikin Money Flow Oscillator. I hope I've pronounced that correctly. Uh, but I'm going to be calling it the CMF from here on. So here I've just put the CMF indicator on a chart on screen. You can see it's in the separate indicator window. And although the CMF indicator can range from plus one to minus one, those extremes are very rare. Typically it will be much closer to zero as you can see it is in this chart. It's a volume weighted accumulation distribution. So it incorporates volume and price movement to calculate an oscillator that indicates whether the stock, in this case it was developed for stocks, is in, in accumulation, meaning people are buying, or in distribution, meaning people are selling. As an oscillator, uh, and when we get to the calculation you'll see, this will range from a maximum value of plus one to a minimum value of minus one. If the oscillator crosses the zero point, then that indicates a potential change in direction. So now, the formula for this, it's not a very complex formula. Firstly, we have a number of periods that we're going to calculate the oscillator for, and this is typically 21, and I'll be setting that as the default in the code. Then we calculate the money flow multiplier, MFM. And this is simply the close minus the low, minus high minus close, all of that divided by high minus low. Then we calculate the money flow volume, which is simply then multiplying that MFM value by the volume for the period. And then the CMF is just calculated as the N period sum of the MFV values divided by the end period sum of the volumes. Now you might see in some documentation that this is described as the end period average divided by the end period average. The result will be the same. Um, and it's much easier to calculate the sum than to calculate the average. So I'm going to be calculating the sum in this case. You may also find conflicting descriptions of the Chaikin Money Flow Oscillator. I have found that different references will describe completely different formulae, but what I'm describing here seems to be the most commonly described, and I actually believe this is the correct check and money flow oscillator. So this is the one that I'm going with here. So I've got the MetaTrader 4 editor open. I'm going to create the indicator. I'm going to put it inside my Orchard Quick Tips folder. So I'll just expand the navigator out to Quick Tips, right click and select new file, and that brings up the wizard to create the custom indicator. I'm going to call this the CMF oscillator. And I'm going to put it in a folder called CMF oscillator because I like to keep things separate. And that should be all. I won't bother to change any of the other settings. I'll do that in the code. And it doesn't normally appear in here when you've used the wizard to create an indicator. So I just right click that and click refresh. And there it is, CMF oscillator. I'm going to do a little reformatting on this because I generally don't like the layout that I'm provided here. I'll just skip the video ahead when I do that. All right, I've done the reformatting now. I'm going to add a comment in here where I'm just going to describe the formula again. I just like to do that because it gives me a reference inside the code. These properties are fine, but as an oscillator, this is not in the chart window. So this is in a separate window. Now as an oscillator, I'm only going to show a single line in the indicator window. Just So I'm having a single indicator buffer. It's just going to be a line, so I'll set the properties for that indicator now. All right, so I'm just coloring this white to begin with. It's a simple line and it's a solid line. I'm setting the width to four because that's easy to see in the video, but it's probably too wide for normal use. Also, as an oscillator, it will have levels that I want to show. So I'll just set the properties for those levels now.
and because the CMF varies between one and minus one, uh, typically it's close to zero, I'm just gonna set my levels at 0.5, minus 0.5 and zero. There is only one input for the CMF and that is the number of periods. So I'll just have that as an input now. And the default for that is 21 periods. I need a buffer then to store the values of the CMF oscillator. So I'll just call that buffer CMF and this is a, an array of doubles. But then I also need some arrays to use for working storage. So I'll create some additional buffers now. So the buffer MFV will store the money flow volume for each bar. The buffer sum MFV will hold the sum of the previous 21 MFVs for each bar. And the buffer sum volume will hold the sum of the previous 21 bars volumes. Now, because I've created these three working buffers and I've said here I only have one indicator buffer, I need to tell the code that I actually have four buffers in total. So I do that with the indicator buffers statement. So I'm saying I have a total of four buffers, which is the one for display plus the three buffers I have here for working storage. Then I need to allocate those buffers to index numbers. I do that with the set index buffer statement and the buffers or the index begins with zero. So where I have indicator number one, that is actually index zero. And that's where I'm putting the CMF buffer and then the others. Uh, it doesn't really matter which order I have those in, but I've just put them in the same order that I listed them here. And then the values of the CMF indicator are going to appear in the data window. So I'm just going to give this buffer a label to appear in that data window. I'll do that with the set index label statement. So when we see the data window in the demonstration, you'll see CMF appearing in the data window. And then I just want to create a short name which will appear at the top left corner of the indicator window. And to do that, I'm using the indicator short name statement and I'm using string format. So the short name is going to be CMF bracket number of periods close bracket. That's the end of the initialization section. Now if we move into the on calculate section, first thing I need to do is calculate how many or determine how many bars need to be calculated because I don't want to calculate the entire array of thousands of bars every time. I only want to calculate those that I haven't already calculated. And this is a piece of code you'll see very often. Um, when this loop in the on calculate starts, the variables rates total is the total number of rates available to the calculation and prev calculated is the number of those that have been calculated previously in an earlier loop through here. So I'm simply saying that's the number that I want to calculate, the total number minus the number that I've already calculated. But then because the latest bar is constantly changing or if we've just moved to a new bar, I simply want to add one to that limit if previously calculated is greater than zero. So that just forces the latest bar to constantly recalculate. Now, the reason I'm using these instead of maintaining my own values, firstly, because they're already provided to me, but secondly, MetaTrader holds a finite number of bars on the chart. You can set that number, but it's not infinite. And when there are too many bars, it will drop off the oldest bar, which means this rates total may reach that maximum number and then need to be adjusted as bars are removed from the chart. And MetaTrader takes care of adjusting that for me whenever a bar is dropped from the chart. And it also adjusts prev calculated as bars are dropped from the chart. In the same way, by using these buffers, if MetaTrader drops the oldest bar from the chart, it will drop the oldest element from this array and from these arrays once I've set them up using the set index buffer. And that's why I use these buffers. MetaTrader takes care of managing these so that their positions match the bars on the chart. Now I just need to create a value for calculating that money flow value. And then I'm going to loop through the bars for the number that I've calculated here in limit. And because 
I'm counting from the oldest bar forward, I'm starting at limit minus 1 and counting down to 0. Now first calculating that money flow multiplier. That's scrolled off the screen so let me just wrap this around a little. Right, so just in case the high and low are the same, and if I scroll across you'll see there's a division by high minus low. Sometimes if you've just opened up a chart and you've gone to the very early stages in the chart, you might find that there's a bar that has a high and low that are the same. And if high and low are the same, then this will be zero and you get a divide by zero error. So I'm simply saying if high is the same as low, then the MFM is zero. Otherwise I'll go through the calculation here. And this is the same as the calculation we saw earlier and in the comments above, close minus the low minus high minus close divided by high minus low. So that's the money flow multiplier. Next I need to populate the volume into that buffer MFV which we defined here, buffer MFV. Now what I've done here, I've used tick volume. If you look in the arguments to the on calculate, there is tick volume and volume. Uh, now I'll go off on a tangent for a moment. Most of these formulae are written for stock trading. Stocks are exchange traded and they have a volume and because everything goes through the exchange, the total volume of trading is known. Foreign exchange and the derivatives that you find in MetaTrader are not exchange traded. So the only volume known is the volume that goes through that broker and quite often even just through that server of that broker. So the volume here is not a true volume and in fact in the brokers that I've tested volume is always zero but I do get a result for tick volume. So I'm using tick volume here if you want to experiment you might get uh, different results but for all of the brokers I've tried tick volume is the best answer. So that calculates the single bar money flow volume. What I need to do now is accumulate those and get the total for the last 21 periods in this case of both the money flow volume and the tick volume. Now in calculating the sum MFV and the sum volume first thing I want to do is set those buffers to zero in each loop. Now I've put those lines in here where I'm setting the sum MFV to zero and the sum volume to zero. And the reason I'm doing this in every loop is for this statement here because at the beginning of the loop I don't have enough bars to calculate a total so I simply want to reset everything to zero before I begin. Now I have two methods I'm going to show you to calculate this running total. In line with my make it work, make it better approach, I'll show you the common approach first, which is simply to embed a loop within the loop. Just tidy this a little. All right, so this is the obvious approach. I'm simply initiating another loop, counting up in this kind, using, I'm counting up in this case, using J++ for the number of periods and I'm simply incrementing the sum MFV by the value of the buffer MFV in each of those cells. Uh, and then I'm doing the same with the volume. I've cast the tick volume to a double here because tick volume, if we see the beginning here, is a long. This will work without the casting, but uh, it can generate a compiler warning and I just don't like those. So I put the casting in here to be sure that I'm getting a double value back. So. This is the first option I'm showing to you. It is easy, uh, easy to understand, and I'm actually suggesting that you use this. The drawback for this approach is that on the first run through, we'll be calculating for the entire series of rates total that we have, which could be thousands of bars. And for each of those bars, we're going to go through this loop 21 times. So you can see there'll be a, a lot of loops. But in practice, when I tested this, it simply didn't take very long. So I don't see a compelling reason to change that. But just in case you're interested, I'll show you the second approach.
Now this second approach, which I've left commented out so that it won't compile in and confuse things, relies on that the sum for any given bar is equal to the sum of the previous bar plus the new value minus the value from 21 periods back. So the sum MFV I is the same as the sum MFV I plus one, the previous bar, plus the new value. And then after this condition, which I'll explain in a moment, I am then subtracting the buffer MFV value from I plus I and P periods. So the new sum is equal to the old sum plus the new value minus the old value. So I'm dropping the old value off from the beginning of the array. The reason I have this condition before I do the subtraction is because for the first 21, in this case bars, the old value is going to be zero in the case of the buffer sum MFV, but for the buffer sum volume, the tick volumes all have something in them. And if I don't simply ignore subtracting those, then I will get incorrect answers. And because this will then carry through from each bar to the next to the next, I would have a completely incorrect array. So all I'm doing here is saying I won't do the subtraction until I know that I'm far enough through that there is something to subtract. As I say, this gives the same answer. It's just a little more complicated and I don't really see that there's a great benefit in doing this, but I've included it here for information. And then I think all I need to do is complete the condition statement here and then complete the loop. And I almost forgot the most important thing, and that is to assign the value to the buffer CMF. So what I'm doing here, I'm simply assigning to buffer CMF I, and I'm doing a check to see that buffer sum volume is not equal to zero. It shouldn't be, but just in case it's better to avoid a divide by zero. Uh, if it, the sum of volume does happen to be zero, then I'm just going to return a zero. Otherwise, this is the simple calculation. It's the sum of the MFV divided by the sum of the volume. So let me just compile this, see that I haven't made any mistakes. No. Nope. And now we'll go over to the chart and see how this looks. All right, I have the chart here with the indicator loaded and I can see that I've forgotten to set the line color and style for the levels. So I'll just go back to the code and add those. All right, so the two statements for that are the property indicator level color and property indicator level style. So I'm just setting the lines to white and a dot style. You'll note that there is only one level color and level style. There isn't one for each level. So this applies to all three of the levels. Compile that and go back to the chart. All right, now we can see I've added the line here for the zero. I did set the other levels at 0.5 and minus 0.5, but this particular chart has not reached those levels, so they're just not showing. Uh, as I said, the CMF indicator typically stays closer to zero and very rarely goes near one or minus one. And as I said earlier, in the data window, you can see that the value of this is showing up as CMF, and that's the label we assigned. As I move around the chart, you can see that changing. So that's all I have for this video. If you found it useful, then please click the like button. And if you'd like to see more of these videos, then click the subscribe and remember to click the bell icon to be notified when we release new videos. So until next time, thank you for watching.